Hey guys, it's the Modern Minecraft and welcome back to a very special video. So, as some of you guys may have realized, we hit 100 subscribers. Can you believe it? That is like a huge number. So, I would like to thank you all for all the awesome support you've been giving me. So, to celebrate 100 subscribers, I'm going to do a little bit of a setup tour slash how I make my videos. So if you enjoy, leave a like, and let's get right into the setup tour. Welcome to the setup tour portion of the video. So, first let's start off with um my gaming chair here, my IKEA gaming chair. So, jokes aside, it's just some regular chair, whatever, I don't know. I've had it for a long time. Also, I have my gaming messy, messy, messy room. So, you know, I've got that going for me. But moving on, we have my two Asus monitors. I'll link everything in the description, like the list or whatever. So these are two 19 by 20, I mean 1920 by 1080 monitors. And they're pretty good. Um, They look very, very nice. And I got them when I built my computer. Also, I have my Razer Black Widow Stealth Ultimate, I think. And I got that when I built my computer as well. It's an awesome keyboard. Very loud is my one issue with it. It's, it can tend to wake up a couple people in the house, you know, but we have this nice green theme going on. I'm going to walk around here. We've got my Razer Naga 2012, a green mouse. Kind of, what is this wiring? It's like, what? But it's kind of dying on me, so that's kind of unfortunate. But a pretty good mouse otherwise. So here we have... The Audio Technica AT2020 Plus, an amazing mic, the mic of my dreams, and it's super awesome. It sounds great. I just have some generic pop filter here. I mean, basically all pop filters are the same. Kind of is like wiggles around and stuff, so that's annoying. It kind of like wiggles around on here. And then for the stand, we have this, I think it's called like a newer professional recording stand or something like that. It's like, has professional in the name, so kind of a silly name, I guess, but whatever. It works, and it's a pretty good stand. You can swivel it around so I can have the mic close to my face. Like, just go over here and be like, yo, whatever. So that's cool. And here we have the HyperX uh, Cloud. The, I think, yeah, I think they're just called the HyperX Clouds in white. They're awesome headphones. Pretty good price for some very nice headphones. They also come with, like, some detachable headset or whatever, but these are, like, solid. They're very nice. Like, this is, like, actual leather. They're very solid. They have, like, this aluminum build, and they are super light and comfortable. I guess the cloud name holds true. Um, but, yeah, these are super awesome, and I'd highly recommend them, by the way. I also have this random light here from Ikea. Kind of illuminates my stuff. It's pretty nice. Here, let's set it to green and make it all look all fancy really quick. I don't know how that look. Matches all the other green things. Here we have my, let me show you guys. I've got my redstone ore here. You know, what, you're gonna, what are you gonna do without the redstone ore, I guess? And of course, we have the gaming machine. I have an AMD FX8350, which is four gigahertz and it's an eight core processor. So pretty good. It's like one of the top of the line AMD processors. Consider I built this build in November 2nd, 2013, so a bit of the stuff has gotten a bit outdated, but still pretty good. So this was some good stuff back two years ago when I built it, and still pretty good now. Okay, so moving on from the CPU, we have a Cooler Master Hyper 2112 uh, cooler. Basically, don't go for the stock fan, really, like, I don't know why you do that. Even if you're not overclocking it, like mine isn't overclocked, even though I should probably, but you shouldn't go for the stock fan. The motherboard, I kind of wish I went for like a better chipset. It has the 970A. I probably could have went for like a 990 or whatever, but it's the Gigabyte GA 970A, and that's basically the only thing you need to know. Of course, it supports the AMD chipset or whatever and stuff, and like the socket for the CPU. So the memory, I have 16 gigabytes of Kingston HyperX uh, DDR 1600 memory, so pretty good. That's a lot of RAM, and that's very useful. 
for rendering, playing Minecraft, all sorts of stuff. I used to host servers a lot on this computer too, while playing at the same time, and modded Minecraft servers. So, you know, this is a bit of RAM. And so for the storage, the main drive I have is my solid state drive, which is 120 gigabytes. It's really small. I'm always running out of space, but I just keep programs and stuff on there. And so that's pretty nice. Also, I have a secondary drive, which is just like a two terabyte um, normal hard drive. And um, it's called the Segate Barracuda. I don't know why you guys would care about that. It's just some generic hard drive, and I use it to load all of my recording stuff and, like, download. It's just a huge mess. I have, like, all sorts of files in there that I don't really deal with, and just, like, my downloads folder and my recordings, as I said. And I think I have, like, a terabyte of recordings. I mean, I deleted, like, 700 gigabytes plus of old recordings recently. So, yeah, pretty crazy. So, we also have for the video card... We have the Asus GeForce GTX 760, a pretty good video card, definitely the best for your money, I would say, like the 60s are the best for your money, so like the 760, 869, 60, whatever, those are like the best for your money, P pretty good performance, I mean, it's not the greatest for recording, because I can't really get 60 FPS that easily in Minecraft, but it's okay, so yeah, it's pretty good, and the case is just some case, and um, that's basically everything. I also use power cable networking. It's kind of a mess down here, but here. Yeah, see the glowing lights? That's the thing. It transmits Ethernet through your power lines. So, yeah, that's how I get Ethernet up to my room because I'm upstairs. Okay, let's see. And I think that's basically everything that I wanted to say. Of course, we have Super Sheep. Camera focus. Super sheep. So yay, that is pretty awesome. And that's about everything I wanted to show you. Here, let's walk out a bit. Here's the setup, kind of full perspective. Pretty nice. Oh, we got this green and blue thing going on. So pretty cool. But now we're gonna move on to how I make my videos. Welcome to the how I make my videos part of the video. So some of you guys who watch me might be aspiring YouTubers yourself, so I thought this might be helpful for those of you who might find this information useful, because I've spent a lot of time tweaking these settings, making sure that I've got what's optimal for me, and I thought I might be able to impart some of this information onto you. So I'm going to be talking about my recording software, some alternates, and my editing software, and some alternates for that. So starting off with my recording software, I have DX Story. Um, it automatically usually selects a profile, so if you open up Minecraft, it'll automatically select that. And um, I mean, you just use all this, like stuff, whatever. That's pretty simple, but uh, computer please. Um, but anyways, this is a specific codec that I downloaded. I'm gonna link a tutorial for um, by a video zen, but, and I'll also link the codec, I guess, but uh, you select this so it downloads all of these and then you select this one which has good compression which means the video sizes are actually compressed a bit and this is high definition so that's a good codec to use it's better than lagarith in my opinion and frame rate i choose 50 but you can do 60 if your computer can handle it on good days my computer can handle 60 on bad days 50. i recorded 720p even though my monitors are 1080p because um Minecraft it makes it like it's too laggy to record a 1080p because that's what I originally did but it's just really laggy for me when playing so I record it 720p even though I play it 1080p um so you can actually do that with DX story you just change it like size you put in this is 720p um AVI I don't synchronize the video FPS but you can um but like if you're recording at 30, then you can actually play at like a different frame rate, which is kind of nice actually. So that's really good. That's a good thing about DX Story. And I mean, audio, I have multiple tracks. I have my system audio and I have my microphone. And that's about all for DX Story. So an alternate to DX Story is Fraps. Fraps is a very, another good software that I used before DX Story. Okay, let's pull the window over here. It's very, very simple. You, it's, I mean, there's not that much you do. You say, um, what frame rate you want. 
um, it will record at the resolution or whatever. It automatically selects the game. You say record sound, record external input. Um, it the thing is, Fraps doesn't compress its files, so that is a disadvantage of Fraps um, because it has really huge files. It also hasn't been updated in a bit, but it works. Like it works, and it gives you like the it'll give you like the best quality possible because it's like doesn't compress anything at all. So that is some good options for recording. But moving on to editing softwares, um, can I use Vegas here? Let me pull up uh, something with Vegas here. Let's see. Oh, here's my recording recording folder. I have all these different stuff. It's kind of a mess. Like I don't know. Let me see how big this file is. Actually, one second. Property here. Hopefully there wasn't anything incriminating there or something. Yeah, it's almost one terabyte of files, so it's pretty big. But yeah, um, let's see. Let's go, whoa, did I edit with Vegas? Oh, here, let's go. Fan Fridays, uh, Bad Lion. Let's see. I'll open this up really quick. So, I use Vegas, and yeah, I use the cracked version of Vegas. I mean, no one wants to spend $600 on that. With Vegas, I mean, I'm not going to explain too much because you can find tutorials, but like I have this, I just cut it, I have intros, I add in text sometimes, and here's the audio tracks like Vegas, I mean, DX Story, as I said, records multiple tracks, so here I have like, I think one of these is game, I don't remember, one is gameplay, one is my mic, so one is system sounds, one is my mic, you have my intro here, and also, let's see, I'll just show you the settings, I, oh, oops, that's not the button. So the button here is like I do render 60 FPS. You want to do 59.940, which is double NTSC, and um, I mean also you could do that double valve 50, and yeah you set the like the width height. When you go to render it, you can render it like I can render it on my GPU because my card supports that, or you can render it on your CPU. I mean I'm not gonna do a whole in-depth tutorial on this because you can definitely find some good ones out there. And I'm kind of new to Vegas, so it wouldn't be that good if I gave you a tutorial. But moving on to Camtasia, this is really nice. I would recommend Camtasia for starting off. First of all, it has a 30-day trial, and it's full features, so there's no limitations. It doesn't have any watermarks. It's the full thing. You get it for 30 days, and if you do YouTube for 30 days and you like it, like 30 days is a lot longer than you'd think then you can just put I don't know get a new email or get Camtasia I mean it's pretty I think it's like 200 bucks it's pretty expensive but you can always get like a new email and then do another trial version but here's like the video the MLG boat fight challenge you can see here's like cut stuff added a little sounds in music you got your video clips um let me see I don't know is there any other tracks we have um here we have some of the, like the newer files like this this uh, video was over a long time like I have like shadows where it's like leave a like or one like equals one laugh or stuff like that and you can do all of that in Vegas you can end this is like in uh, where you have DX story um actually I should tell you guys something this is a pretty important tip if you want to use DX story with multiple audio tracks and Camtasia a really good piece of advice to use is because it's not going to pick up the multiple tracks so what you do is you take your file, for example, I don't know, like solo, let's just go to like episode 22, I don't know, and then you click on this, and you click on this thing here, and then you go to, sorry, wait, not this, you click on the AVI file, and you click extract audio stream, and it's going to pull out the audio streams, and one of them is going to be your uh, first track, so the ST0, it's gonna, it'll recognize that's the track it'll pick up, but then you're gonna need to import the ST1, and um, that's just something you need to know. So you just grab that, drag it into the media bin or whatever. It, um, Camtasia is pretty simple to figure out. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's, you just do a couple things here. Nothing too crazy. And it works really well. It's very simple, friendly user interface. And, um, yeah, that's basically how I record my YouTube videos. I guess I'll show you how I make my thumbnails really quick. I just use paint.net, so I basically get, um, like, a frame from the video, so I'll just, like, I'll be, like, 
I'll load up, uh, I don't know, let's go to Fraps. I'll just be like, uh, fans, I'll be like, I'll, when I pick a thumbnail, I'll just go here, I'll watch the video. And then, so for all of you asking, I'll I'm find, uh, wait, this is the last clip. So for example, I would just like full screen this, then I would just print screen it and get that. I would import this into paint.net, drag it in. I use a font um, called SF Fedora. There's a pretty good tutorial on how to make these. I just normally take like an action shot and then use SF Fedora and like, I don't know, I'll show you really quickly like how I do the fonts. So uh, SF, it sometimes what happens is with SF Fedora, it kind of like glitches out and then you have to save the file and reopen it if it's not appearing. Uh, but yeah, that just happens. So like, I'll do this, I'll be like, I don't know, make that a little bit bigger, like, yeah, Ooh, that's pretty big. Um, yeah, you want to make your, you do want to make your, one advice is that you really want to make your writing really big, like, this would be too small, like, I'm just saying, because when this is uh, uploaded to YouTube and you have that thumbnail, you really want it to appear very big so that people can see it well. And then what I do here is um the, give it like that gradient effect i will go i know this is running a bit long but i hope this tutorial is kind of helping you guys out a bit i go to gradient radial and then you just kind of do oops i'm sorry before you do that though you actually have to select this tool you click on this you press control like this and you hold down control as you're doing this and then you can do gradient so anytime you want to apply a gradient like that you do that also, if you have, like, SF Fedora, let's see, like, uh, shadow, like how I fill in the text here, so, like, uh, yeah, you see, the, here's the issue. Let me just reload this really quickly. Um, don't save. Okay, paint. So, that's the issue, but you could just save it and re reopen the file, and it should be fine. But then, um, you just go right here. Let's see, let me just grab SF, oops, sorry, I'm sorry about this. Kind of unprofessional here, but you just go to SF Fedora, and it'll like, just do SF Fedora Shadow or whatever. And you're like, get a bit bigger so you guys can see. I'd be like, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd usually choose like a lighter color for the inside, cause the shadow should be darker. Like orange and red go together pretty well. Um, so what you do is you grab your magic tool, you click inside, do the same thing and like this then you grab your paint bucket you go i want some orange going on in here and then you just do you just do it like this and then you grab i would say your gradient tool and you want to just do that and it looks pretty nice so i'll link a tutorial for how to make thumbnails and um i'll link all this stuff like camtasia and everything so I hope you guys enjoy this video and thank you all so much for 100 subscribers. It means so much. And um, if you have any questions about anything, leave it in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Sorry that it ran a little bit long, but I hope you still enjoyed it. And anyways, guys, my name is Amanda Minecraft and I'm signing off. Thanks so much for watching.